Um, so for today, I thought I would give you a classic science example and give you a thinking classroom spin. And this was born out of um, some of the stuff I've been seeing on the media lately. There's a lot of talk about like anti-vaxxers, vaccine mandates, um, the election's on right now. And people are actually at the point where they're like threatening the lives of politicians and their families because they don't agree with their opinion. And I think something that we've lost with the birth of technology is the ability to have like a, an open and honest debate. I mean, like I have friends that are super conservative and super liberal and or like even more further on the spectrum. And that doesn't mean I can't be friends with them. Like I still love them. I just don't agree with them all the time. And that's okay. And for some reason we've lost that whole concept of that it being okay to have different opinions from people. And I think that as science teachers, this is where we actually really need to do a lot of work. And I think a lot of times we leave politics out of the classroom. And I'm not saying you have to go in and tell like your teacher or your students like who to vote for. But I think what we can tell students is one, how to have healthy and open debates, and two, how to think critically about the information that comes in. And that's a really big science thing. So here's the thinking class example that kind of tie back into all this. So with your thinking classrooms, we start in a huddle around the front board. This is assuming no COVID protocols and you're actually allowed to like stand around and whatever. So you huddle and at the board, all you write on the board is questions. And you say at the start of any science is always a question. What are some types of questions that scientists have asked before? And you'll get a whole range of stuff. Kids will be like, what's a star made out of? What's water? What's a chemical reaction? What is light? What, am I actually here? Do other dimensions exist? And that kind of stuff. And you can also coach them if they're not getting into some of the societal questions. You could also talk about how like scientists are asking questions now about like how do we support significant populations? How do we um, grow plants in areas where we're getting extreme weather or droughts or other issues that are coming up because of climate change? How do we come up with more sustainable materials to use in things like cars or clothing and that kind of stuff? How do we reuse precious metals from old electronics because we are running out of them and we need them to build the new computers? So there's all these really great questions out there that scientists are asking all the time. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, okay, these are all great ideas. Okay, so now what? We have a question, good science. What do we do next? And the answer is research. So a lot of scientists, as soon as they form a question, what they'll do is they'll look and try to figure out like, who's asked this question before? Does the data exist? Did they ask the question in the same way or did they test in the same way? Was the experiment set up similar to what I was thinking or is it totally different? Um, nobody's looked this up, but there's something similar um, and all this kind of thing. And then the next question you're gonna ask students is like, okay, great, these are great questions and great places to look for information. Now, where do we find that information? And they're gonna see the internet. And they're gonna be like, okay, great. That is a great place to start and grab information. Um, is a great place to start our research and digging and figuring out where we need to go next. So what I want you to do as a group today, you are going to get an opinion and you're going to tell me Coke or Pepsi. And you can't tell me that I like Coca-Cola better because that's just the way it's always been. What you have to do is you have to give me some data or some facts to support your group's decision over whether which one's better, Coke or Pepsi. Give them half an hour. They'll dig, they'll go, blah, 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 blah. And then as you're going around seeing stuff, what you can do is you can, on their boards, highlight a couple cool things. So one, sample size. So for example, if I said, okay, one group, um, you had two Cokes, one Pepsi. Okay, so that means the whole class likes Coke better. Does that make sense, right? And so you're looking at sample size. Um, sources of data. You may have a bunch of sources come up that are similar or like resources that you see on the boards that are similar between students. So talk about like sources, um, what's a credible source on the internet, how do you know it's credible, talk about like the Google algorithm and how Google, even if you want to know the other side because of previous search history and previous things that Google has heard you say, they'll feed you information that is based off of like what you want to see so they keep you in your tunnel and you don't see the other side. So looking at exterior viewpoints is really important. Um, you can start talking about how there's bias. So like are the sources you're looking at, like if, is the study saying that Pepsi is better done by Pepsi? And does that count as good science? Why or why not? Um, you can even talk about like bias in 
you could even link that into like societal things. So like, for example, this summer, um, there was a big article on um, Uber and how a black woman and a white man who were friends both opened the Uber app to order an Uber for them to get picked up and the black woman's was almost twice the cost of the white man's. And so there's bias even built into the things that we think are like unbiased. And so why do we need diversity in science? So you can go on a tangent in that direction. Um, there's so many different things. And then you can even say something, and I know this will get a laugh out of the kids, but you can say, okay, in your group, if you didn't agree, like you couldn't come to a consensus, during that conversation, did you like threaten to kill your friend's family or your friend? And they'll laugh and be like, no. And I'm like, well, that's what's happening right now on the election campaign trail. And it's not okay to threaten someone because you have a difference of opinion. It is okay to have a difference of opinion. And it is okay to not agree. And that is something that's really, really important for kids to learn. Especially right now in the 17, 18, 19, 20, you're starting to identify like, what are my core values? What are my core beliefs? What are my ideals? What do I want the world to look like? And sometimes that differs from what my friends want the world to look like. Sometimes that differs from what my safe, caring adults want the world to look like. And that doesn't mean I have to cut them out of my life. I can still hold on to them and just recognize that I'm not gonna agree with them okay all the time. And that's okay. So this is how we bring critical thinking and politics and good societal norms into our classroom to help combat some of the stuff they're seeing online, which is so negative and is okay with being negative, okay? And this is how we can make better people. And this is how as science teachers, we can do something to be good for humanity and at the same time, bring in thinking classroom principles. So this is just an example for you about how we can do critical thinking and thinking classrooms together. And if you have questions or concerns, let me know.